Hey everybody, it's Pastor Tom and Tammy, and here we are again today with another Truth Talks in our John Book of John series. And I'm very excited, we're on chapter 19. And of course, this just a few weeks ago, about a, a month or so ago, we experienced uh, Resurrection Day, Easter, as it's called um, in, our, in all the world. Um, so tonight or today we're going to be talking about that whole thing that happened to Jesus on Friday, Good Friday, and how that's important. So do you want to pray, Tammy? We'll get started. Father, we thank you for the opportunity just to gather together and to talk about Jesus and to talk about what he did for us and just to uh, read and understand and learn mm -hmm. uh, each and every mm -hmm. time that we read this more and more about what happened. And we thank you for it in Jesus', Jesus name. name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, this is really, uh, this is going to be good. So go ahead and get started, Tammy. I'm probably going to interrupt you quite a lot okay. on this one, maybe. Chapter 19. Pilate then took Jesus and scourged him, which that's a whole sermon. Right, right. It was a terrible it was a horrible thing, thing, a horrible thing. Remember, we talked uh, last week how the Romans, well, we didn't talk about this, but the Romans were pretty brutal. They, if you were condemned to death, you were fair game. They didn't care. You, you were going to die anyway. So what do they care, you know? We have this thing called no cruel and unusual punishment. Well, they didn't, and they could do whatever they wanted to you, and the, nobody stopped anything. So go ahead. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and put a purple robe on him. And they began to come up to him and say, Hail, King of the Jews, and to give him slaps in the face. And so let me say this too. Not only <coughs> would, was it the cruelty, just for the sake of cruelty, but the, the Romans didn't really like the Jews all that much because they felt they were, they were very rebellious. They, they did not like the Romans at all. They were always chasing down rebellious factions to try and destroy them. So um, it was, you could see how they would, the Roman soldiers were really enjoying uh, beating this, this man senseless pretty much. So. Pilate came out again and said to them, Behold, I am bringing him out to you so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. Once again, Pilate mm -hmm. saying, he didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jesus then came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. So let me, let me just say this about this whole situation. Um, there was nothing, there was no appeals process, there was no stopping this train to execution. And it was a gruesome, evil, horrible thing that, um, that happened to Jesus. I think Pilate brought him out in that bloody mess that he was to say, okay, here he is, look at him. Um, Have you no mercy? Basically saying, you okay, I don't... I don't find any guilt in him. Mm -hmm. Here he is. He's been, he's been tortured and, and whipped and, mm -hmm. and uh, okay, is it, basically, is, th is this enough for you? Mm -hmm. Okay, so verse 6. So when the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, crucify, crucify. So it wasn't enough for them. Pilate said to them, take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. So Pilate did not want to do this. Mm -mm. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by that law he ought to die, because he made himself out to be the Son of God. Therefore, when Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid, and he entered into the praetorium again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Mm -hmm. But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, You do not speak to me? Do you not know that I have authority to release you and I have authority to crucify you? Mm -hmm. Jesus answered, You would have no authority over me unless it had been given you from above. For this reason, he who delivered me to you has the greater sin. So mm -hmm. the Jews had the greater sin. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to go back to verse 6. I think it's so interesting 
Jesus was beaten pretty bad, and which is a t complete and ridiculous understatement, mm -hmm. but the only thing they could say was crucify him, crucify him. Yeah. This shows you the extent of the evil in these people's hearts. It was horrible. So as a result of this, that would be Jesus' statement saying that uh, the greater sin was on those who delivered Jesus to Pilate, but he still had sin on him for what he was about mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. As a mm -hmm. result, Pilate made efforts to release him. But the Jews cried out saying, if you release this man, you are no friend of Caesar. Mm -hmm. Everyone who makes himself out to be a king opposes Caesar. So, and you know, these people didn't care anything about Caesar. No. They hated Caesar. From their perspective, Caesar was a, uh, an uncircumcised Philistine. I mean, he was, <clears throat> he was not their king and they wanted nothing to do with him. But now all of a sudden, they're taking up the Roman cause for Caesar. It's just kind of weird. It's not weird, it's, it's demonic. Therefore, when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the pavement, but in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Gabbatha. Mm -hmm. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover. It was about the sixth hour, and he said to the Jews, Behold your king. So they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? Yeah. The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. All of a sudden, they're good Romans. Yeah, nah, sorry, don't yeah. believe it. Um, 16? Yeah, I just have a, a couple of comments here. Um, verse 19, 9, where Pilate says that he has found no fault in him. Um, there were three times that Pilate publicly pronounced Jesus innocent. 18, 38, 19, verse 4, and 19, verse 6. Hmm. So three times. Just interesting that it was, mm -hmm. he pronounced his innocence three times. Um, so then he handed him over to them to be crucified. Verse 17, they took Jesus therefore and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two other men, one on either side and Jesus in between. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It was written, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Therefore, many of the Jews read this inscription for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews were saying to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his outer garments and made four parts, a part to every soldier and also the tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to decide whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture. They divided my outer garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Therefore the soldiers did these things. Um, just a couple of notes here. Uh, it was a Roman custom to write the name of the condemned person and their crime on a plaque to be placed above their head at execution. So it was kind of like their, their crime was up there. Um, according to Roman law, the garments of a condemned criminal belonged to the executioners. Jesus had two items of clothing. The cloak was a large, loose garment. The tunic was a close-fitting garment that went from the neck to the knees. The outer garment could be conveniently divided, but the inner garment could not. Thus, the soldiers divided the outer one and cast lots for the inner one. This fulfilled David's prophecy, which is in Psalm 22, 18. Let's see, um, verse 25 and a half. <laughs> but standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. Um, Mary, Mary, and Mary. Mm -hmm. um, 
When Jesus saw them, when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. From that hour, the disciple took her into his own household. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things had already been accomplished to fulfill the scripture, he said, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine upon a branch of hyssop and brought it up to his mouth. Therefore, when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Mm. Um, Note here, having fulfilled every command of the Father and every prophecy of Scripture, Jesus voluntarily died. Mm -hmm. He bowed his head, he said, it is finished, Mm -hmm. and he gave up his spirit. Which, as we've said many times, was a um, uncharacteristic process in the the crucifixion death Mm -hmm. uh, method. It took a long time to die Mm -hmm. in crucifixion. In Jesus, uh, the Bible says that not a bone of his, uh, not Uh, one of his bones will be broken. None of Jesus' bones were broken on the cross. He was completely intact. Uh, All of his bones and his whole body, except of course he was beaten and bloodied and and his skin was mutilated. Um, This was not a cry of exhaustion, but of completion. Jesus Mm -hmm. did what he came to do. Right, right. What he agreed with the Father to do. The whole thing of buying back humanity complete. It was done. Mm -hmm. It was finished. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's good. Verse 31. (coughs) Then the Jews, because it was the day of preparation so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath was a high day, asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first man and of the other one who was crucified with him. But coming to Jesus, when they saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. And he who has seen has testified, and his testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, so that you also may believe. For these things came to pass to fulfill the scripture, not a bone of him shall be broken. And again, another scripture says, they shall look on him whom they pierced. Mm-hmm. Um, a note on the um, piercing. After the soldier did the piercing, the blood and water came out, indicating that Jesus was already dead. Only blood would have flowed from a living body. Mm. So there was the blood was not flowing. Mm. Um, after these things, Joseph... Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but a secret one for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate granted permission. So that, that secret for fear of the Jews is it, they had already threatened people that they would be put out of the synagogue mm-hmm. if they followed Jesus. I mean, it's kind of like what we experience today, the threats and stuff that, that happen. Um, he was, people were threatened for their faith. Mm-hmm. And this guy, you know, was one of them, you know. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus, who had first come to him by night, also another secret follower of Jesus, mm-hmm. um, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds of weight. That's a lot of spices. Mm-hmm. Um, So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen wrappings with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. Therefore, because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is all happening on Friday. And, you know, we have two uh, videos out there on YouTube, the Good Friday video and the uh, Resurrection Day mm-hmm. video that would be very good to go and watch those messages because they really all are part of what we're talking about here. And it's all pertinent every day. You don't have to wait until Easter to hear the Resurrection story. 
you can go back to it and, and see all of this and participate in it and get it in your heart and in your mind because we need it every single day. Mm -hmm. So what else on this, Tammy? What else can we say about this? Anything? It's just, it's so I, beautiful and it's so, it's so sobering to read this chapter and just to see the treachery and the, the evil hard hearts. It was horrible mm -hmm. what these people did to Jesus. They did not believe and it was all in greed. It was all about greed and power and money and all of it. It was disgusting, absolutely disgusting. And in John, it doesn't talk about this, but in either Matthew, Mark, or Luke, it talks about one of the thieves um, on one of the side of Jesus who called out mm -hmm. and, um, you know, basically said he had done crime and he was guilty and he should be, mm -hmm. he should be crucified, but that Jesus had not. And um, he got saved right there on mm -hmm. the cross. Right. And um, the other one didn't. And that's um, yeah. the other thief, you know, didn't believe in Jesus and rejected that and mm -hmm. had that opportunity right then and there. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just amazing that um, in the last moments of his life, mm -hmm. Jesus was still giving. It's totally possible. Co it's totally giving. possible. People can get saved at the last mm -hmm. moment. It's not. What I would say is the best, I don't want to wait till the very last minute yeah. of my breath. That what I was saying, Jesus. the last minute of Jesus' life, he was still mm -hmm. forgiving and showing love to other mm -hmm. people. I mean, Absolutely. in his intense pain, mm -hmm. he was showing compassion for that other person. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and for his mother, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, to say, to look down at her and to look at John and say, this is your mother, this is your son. I mean, he was taking care of her too, like, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to make sure that, right. that she has a son to take care of her. Mm -hmm. um, beautiful. Absolutely yeah. beautiful. Constantly giving. Absolutely. And he's still giving, and he's still loving, and he's still forgiving. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for Jesus, that you sent your son for us, to die for us in this horrid, horrid, horrible way which is what was required for our sin. Lord, we just pray that people will receive Jesus and that we can be part of their hearing about Jesus. We just thank you for all the goodness that you've poured out on us at Cornerstone. And Lord, we just pray that you would help us this week to be everything that you've called us to be. We ask it now in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Listen, if you haven't subscribed to the Cornerstone Alive YouTube channel. We'd like you to do that because we want you to be made aware of all the videos that are coming out every week, where well, there's at least two a week, that we want you to be part of. The Word is important. You need God's Word in your life. It brings stability and it brings peace. It brings joy. So you need it. You need the Word. Hit the notification bell so that you'll be made aware when videos come out. And make a comment or two if you'd like. God bless you. And we'd love to see you at Cornerstone Alive. If you're looking for a church, we'd love to have you come and visit um, and just see what we're all about. And we are about the love of God in this place. We love people and we want to help people. God bless you and have a great week.